guy called Jay Z. She says, you idiot, Dad, that's Jay Z. He's the biggest rap artist of all time. I said, well, he wants to record one of my pieces. She said, well, do it. <laughs> community I'm back again to do a sequel to my library music film video which I put out maybe about 18 months ago now some of you guys have made it past the intro which I thank you I had fun with it uh, you're probably scratching your head I never caught that original video or it was 18 months ago I don't remember what library music is that's okay uh, in a nutshell a library music is designed for directors or producers of uh, film, television, or radio that are operating off of very low budgets and they can't afford a dedicated piece of music written specifically uh, for their work. So they go to these library music catalog labels uh, and they find a piece of music that will fit within their particular scene. Now, some of you might be thinking, I I may not have heard of any of this, but yes, you have. So I would like to play a piece that's very familiar to some of you in North America. So here you go. So do you recognize that? That comes from a very popular reality television series in North America. I'm sorry about my uh, viewers in, in Asia and Europe that are not familiar with this, but this is a very popular reality television show which has been going since the 80s. I personally am not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of reality television. Um, and the song that this record is on goes for hundreds of dollars. Um, I don't own it personally because I can't see myself playing the music that frequently. Um, but I would like to give you another example. So how about this? Those pieces uh, were used in cartoons and many other short films, and it comes from this KPM record. Now, KPM is probably the most popular uh, library music label, and they all come in these very generic uh, packaged sleeves, and the only way you're gonna know what you're getting is to take a look at the back, and this comes from Light Atmospheres. Um, it is a fun record to listen to. I picked it up fairly cheaply. Now, some of these guys can go for thousands, but uh, this one I think I grabbed for like $18, and yeah, I enjoy it. Um, but if you didn't catch my previous video, uh, the driver for doing that one was this uh, record here, the Library Music Film record. This is now out on streaming. Uh, if you want to see some of the record collectors that collect this type of music, uh, some of the composers, uh, some of the folks that have sampled uh, library music records. So there are all kinds of hip hop artists that just love to find these records because they collect samples from them. This film is definitely worthwhile. So I highly recommend it. But I have two drivers for doing this film today. And the first is this record called Unusual Sounds. 95% of the library music out there is very generic. Probably isn't worth owning. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. 
I, there's a lot of crap out there, but this calls some of the gems out from various catalogs. Uh, it introduced me to several different composers, which I'm gonna feature here. Um, but this is just fantastic. It also came with an accompanying book, uh, also titled Unusual Sounds. This goes over the different catalogs. Uh, it talks to some of the different composers. Uh, it has photos from the, the sessions, and it also goes through uh, some of the covers and the art. Now, library music records had their own distinct style, and you went from country to country and label to label. Um, they all had something unique, and this book is just fantastic. I can't recommend it enough. I promised you I was going to play you a couple of cuts off this one, so here you go. Now, the second reason I did this video today uh, was because I had been looking for a piece of library music, well, for over 30 years now. Uh, I was first introduced to this uh, music uh, when I was in elementary school, and I had heard this particular song with elementary school science films. I heard it on radio, and so I, the, the song itself got seared into my head, and so for the past three years, I had been sampling library music records trying to find this particular piece, and I finally found it this year. Uh, it is a piece by a composer called Francis Monkman, and it's off this Bruton music label. Now, incidentally, Michael Jackson owned this label for a short time. Uh, this comes off the record Energism, which was released in 1978, and the piece is called The Achievements of Man. And there's two cuts on here, a shortened cut and a longer cut. Um, and so I want to play that for you now. So hearing it with uh, New Year's and through higher fidelity equipment, um, it didn't hold up to what I remembered it to be, but still it was a fun listen. Uh, uh, it's a very dated record, but I enjoy the sound of it. It's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea, so it's okay if you think it sucks. Well, everybody has their own taste, but uh, I happen to enjoy it. Uh, there's some interesting, uh, there's some other interesting pieces on here, so here's another cut for you. Just like the Allen 2 uh, song, uh, this label, uh, Themes, actually had some wonderful work. And this is just a fantastic record called The Rock Machine. And so uh, library music was written for different genres. This is of the rock vein, and this features Alan Parker, who is a, just a phenomenal guitarist. Um, and I would like to play you a couple of cuts off this one. So here you go. Thank you. 
Now, I mentioned earlier that the Unusual Sounds record introduced me to several different composers, and one of those composers was Klaus Weiss, and he is a German composer and composed for uh, German library music labels. Klaus Weiss was a jazz drummer. He had actually played with Mal Waldron uh, and several other Americans touring through Europe. Uh, this Time Signals album is synth heavy, uh, it's, it's jazzy, uh, it's very, very interesting, and I'd like to play you a, a couple of tracks off this one. So from the French catalog, Unusual Sounds introduced me to some of the French composers is Janko Nilovic, who is a Yugoslavian Montenegrin composer that uh, moved to France in his 20s. Uh, he was quite prolific. Uh, if you're into jazz funk, uh, you can't go wrong with any of his records. This is Soul Impressions. Um, he did several which were just fantastic. Uh, he was also featured in the library music film. Uh, I would like to play you uh, a couple of cuts off this one, so here you go. So the last record I want to show for you today, uh, another Unusual Sounds library music film uh, uh, record uh, that introduced me to this artist, it's Stefano Torsi. Uh, this is Feelings on the Schema reissue label. Um, the Schema label does a lot of library music records and they all come with CDs so you get a digital copy. Uh, this is Feelings and Stefano couldn't uh, you put his own name on it, which is quite interesting. Uh, he went by uh, Jay Richford <laughs> on this particular record. But, but again, this is a, another jazz funk uh, record, uh, definitely a classic. Uh, here's a couple of cuts off this one. Uh, thank you if you've made it thus far. Uh, I just wanted to go over some of my latest passions and you know one of them has been library uh, film music. Um, you know I realize this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Uh, there are thousands of these records out there and again a vast majority of them aren't worth a damn but there are some which are, are really really quite good. Um, do you have any library music in your collection? Are you a fan? I'd like to know. Shoot me a comment down below. If you thought this totally sucked, that's okay. <laughs> Shoot me a comment down below. Say, nah, it's not my bag. That's all right. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.